So, good afternoon friends, once again uh, we start our next session. In the previous section we had uh, studied uh, what is the shear force, what is the bending moment, how to draw shear force and bending moment that is why I taken a very so small and simple problem that you can understand how to calculate and how to draw a shear force and a bending moment diagram. Right Now, in this particular section I am going to derive the relationship between what is a shear force bending moment and a relationship between a shear force and a load. Right? And after that we are going to take one problem in which we are going to calculate the point at which the shear force value is 0 and at that particular point the bending moment value is maximum. So, we start our relationship to start this particular relationship we have to consider a simply supported beam. So, we can see that we have got a simply supported beam having hinge support and roller support of span L subjected to a uniformly distributed load of intensity W kilo Newtons per meter. Now, we are taking a small length delta x a b and on this particular small length delta x a b at section a we have got bending moment m and shear force v as well as at section b we have got bending moment m plus delta m and shear force v plus delta v. It is very obvious that as we are moving from a towards b the value is increasing that is why at a it is m and at b it is m plus delta m. Similarly, the shear force value at section a is v and at section b it is uh, v plus del v. Right? Now, to uh, calculate this relationship we will consider the section a b and apply our conditions of equilibrium. So, our first condition of equilibrium is sigma h is equal to 0. As we know there is no horizontal loading on this particular beam this uh, equation or this condition is satisfied. Our second condition is sigma v is equal to 0 that is algebraic summation of all the vertical forces. So, at point A we have got a shear force V in the downward direction negative, then we have got a UDL for intensity delta x. So, if I want to convert this UDL in terms of a point load kilo Newton, what it will be? W kilo Newton per meter multiplied by delta x meters. So, this meter meter will cancel out we will have w into delta x kilo Newton. So, that is nothing but a shear force or a concentrated point load and it is acting in the vertical downward direction. So, again it will be taken as negative and at section b we have got vertical upward force of v plus del v. So, positive v plus delta v and that is equal to 0. So, minus v plus v will cancel out we get minus w into del x plus del v that is equal to 0. So, we can say that w into delta x is equal to delta v or we can say w that is equal to delta x upon uh, delta v upon del x. So, what does this equation show? This equation is having the term v that is shear force and it is having the term w that is loading on the beam. So, this equation shows that the rate of change of shear force is directly proportional to the amount of loading on the beam. So, delta v upon delta x is equal to v. Now, we apply our third condition and the third condition is sigma moment is equal to 0. Now, sigma moment is equal to 0. So, for sigma moment is equal to 0, we have to take moment about a particular point. Suppose, we take moment at section uh, B. So, we start with first moment M, it is in which direction? Anti clockwise, k clockwise, it is in the anti clockwise direction. So, anti clockwise direction it will be minus. Then we have got V. So, V is a force. So, what is the distance up to point B? It is delta x. So, V into del x. Again it will rotate in anti clockwise direction. So, it will be taken as minus. Then we have got this particular UDL for a span of delta x. So, first we will write down W into del x. What is W into del x? 
it is nothing but a force and we are required to multiply by the distance because we are taking moment. So, this u d l will be concentrated at c g. So, center of del x will be del x by 2 and again it will be moving in anti clockwise direction. So, minus and the last is m plus del m it is in the clockwise direction. So, plus m plus del m and that is equal to 0. Now, we know that the length of the beam is L and we have taken a very small section delta x right. That means, delta x square will be even smaller. So, we can neglect this particular term right. So, now what equation we get minus m minus v into del x plus m plus del m. So, minus m plus m gets cancelled out we get f into delta m is equal to v into del x. Okay. Is it right f into del m? Uh, f into del m not f into del m we have got only del m. Okay. So, we get delta m upon delta x that is equal to v. So, now in this particular equation what all parameters we have? We have got shear force, we have got bending moment m. So, this equation shows that the rate of change of moment or the bending moment directly depends upon the value of shear force. So, these are the two relationships between shear force, bending moment and the load acting on the beam. Now, we will take a problem uh, for a simply supported beam subjected to a uniformly distributed load as well as a point load. So, we will consider a simply supported beam. The loading on the beam is as shown in the diagram. It has got one hinge support, one roller support and it has got uniformly distributed load of intensity 2 kilo Newtons per meter for a span of 2 meters and it has got at a distance of 1 meter a point load of intensity 5 kilo Newtons. So, as usual our first step will be to calculate the support reactions because the support reaction has got vertical forces. So, our step 1 will be to calculate support reaction. To calculate support reaction we have to apply our conditions of equilibrium that is sigma h is equal to 0, sigma v is equal to 0 and sigma moment is equal to 0. So, we know that at hinge support how many reactions are there? There are two reactions one in the vertical direction and one in the horizontal direction, but as there is no horizontal loading no need to show the horizontal reaction at roller support there is only one vertical reaction. So, we can show V and at point D. So, V D. Now, we apply our first condition that is sigma V is equal to 0. So, algebraic summation if the force is in the vertical upper direction positive. So, V D will be positive force is in the downward direction negative minus 5 and U D L will be converted in terms of a point load or a concentrated load. So, 2 into 2 that is 4 kilo Newton and V A is in the upper direction positive that is equal to 0. So, we get V A plus V D that is equal to 9 kilo Newtons. This is our equation 1. Then we apply our second condition that is sigma moment is equal to 0. So, moment we take about moment we can take either about point A or we can take about point D it will be 0. So, we take moment about point A clockwise moment will be considered as positive. So, moment is nothing but force into perpendicular distance up to the point where the moment is to be taken. We are taking moment about point A. So, V D into what is the distance up to point A 2 plus 2 that is 4. So, V D into 4 uh, it is moving in anti clockwise direction. So, it will be minus then 5 into 3 clockwise positive and 4 into 
what is the center for 2? For 2 it will be 1 or we can write down 2 by 2. It is in the clockwise direction positive that is equal to 0. So, we get 4 V D that is equal to 15 plus 4. So, V D that is equal to 4 point 2 plus 1 that is equal to 5 point 2 kilo newtons. This is our first reaction. If I want to find out the value of V A, we have to sub substitute the value of V D in equation number 1. So, we get V A that is equal to 9 minus V D that is equal to 9 minus 5.2 that is equal to 3.8 kilo newtons. So, this is the value of reaction we have obtained. We can write down over here if the answer obtained had been negative then we should have to change the direction of the force, but we have got both the answers V and V D positive. So, our assumed direction is right. So, we can say V A that is equal to 3.8 kilo newtons and V D that is equal to 5.2 kilo newtons. Okay. So, our first step is over. Now, we have to second step we have to calculate the value of shear force. So, to calculate the value of shear force, what are the sections you can see over here? What is the section I had explained? Sections are those points where the forces are acting. So, in this particular problem, we have got how many sections? A, B, C and D. So, our second step is shear force calculation. I will write down the short form as SF and calculations. Okay. Also, I had discussed that whenever we have got a point load, we have to calculate the shear force just on right and just on left. So, on just right we draw a one line and see on the right side is there any force acting? There is no force acting. So, it will be 0. Then shear force at point D just left. So, on left side we will draw one line and C on the right side. How many forces are there on the right side of the section? Only one force and that is V D, but in this case V D is trying to push the beam in the upward direction. So, shear force will be considered as negative. So, minus 5.2 kilo newtons. Then we come to shear force at point C just right. So, at just right we will draw one line and see on the right side of section again only one force and the right portion is pushed in the upper direction it will be considered as positive. Then shear force at point C just left. So, at point C just left we have got how many forces? 2 forces. So, 5.2 in the upper direction negative and 5 in the downward direction positive. So, it will be minus 0 0.2 kilo newtons. Then shear force at point B, at point B it is the UDL. So, no need to go just right, just left. Put your hand at point B and see on the right side of the section. So, we have got again two forces. So, minus 0 0.2 kilo newton. Then shear force at point A, A is a support reaction and support reaction is nothing but a vertical load. So, we draw one line on the right side of point A and see on the right side of the section how many forces are there? 3. One is V D in the upper direction. So, negative. Second is 5 in the downward direction positive and third is U D L. What is the concentrated load for the U D L? 2 into 2 that is 4 and it is in the downward direction. So, positive. So, we get it as 3.8, 3.8 kilo newtons and shear force at point A just left. So, on just left of the point A we can draw a line and put our hands on that section line and see on the right side. How many forces are there? 1, 2, 3 and 4. right? So, it will be minus 5.2 plus 5 plus 4 and minus 3.8 because it is 
trying to push the right portion in the upward direction. So, we get the value of shear force as 0 at point A. Now, we have to draw the shear force diagram. So, to draw the shear force diagram, we have to take all the points where the shear force is calculated in the vertical downward direction. Then we have to draw a baseline, the positive values above the baseline, negative values below the baseline. To start with maximum positive value we have got 3 and maximum negative value we have got 5. So, we can show over here that this is 1, 2 and 3 okay. and downward we have got 1. 2, 3, 4 and 5. Now, to start with first is shear force at point D just write 0. So, we can show 0. Shear force at point D just left. So, again at point D we have got minus 5.2. So, minus 5.2 will be somewhere over here. What is the load acting at point D? It is a vertical support reaction. So, when vertical support reaction is there we have to draw a vertical line. So, join both the points okay. as it was negative we had gone below the baseline. Then shear force at point C just right it is again minus 5.2. So, the same point there is no load between C and D. So, we have to draw a horizontal line. Then shear